It's more, it's not even coaxing. It's sort of like an unspoken yes. It's like already in place. And while we're walking around as what we're not, like a Zen bitch slap can startle that burning of selfing into sort of like a, a pause being introduced. And in that pause, the unspoken yes is speaking. Yeah. In that pause. And that's really the message. I mean, you're the carrier of the message, literally. It says certain things out here may ignite it for you, certain, may, certain things may tickle it for you, but the message isn't brought to you. It's not delivered, nor are you the one who achieves it or acquires it. It's already in place. It's, it's mine, unstructured and selfing. That's all it is, right? But it's an invitation to the meaning that's issuing to us. It's like an invitation. It's just an invitation, because the mind... Right now, there's an unstructured aspect of mind, and then there's a structure over the mind called a mental process called selfing. And most of us have been looking from self-centeredness for a long time, seemingly. And in that, time has a sense when you're here. Yeah? So time gives it a more sense of uh, weight or reality or historical fact. So time is used by mind to convince us of something a lot of the time. A lot of the time, it's using time to convince us of something. But there's an unstructured mind that you are, and no matter how mind is structured, it can't erase the unstructuredness of mind. Yeah? There's no way. So no matter how many mental cities are built on your land, it's the land that's allowing those cities to be built. The cities don't become the land. Yeah? So mind is mind, and most of us have been... Uh, subjected to mind identified as a self. Yeah? So now that mind is seeing life from a point of view of being a self, called self-centeredness. And from that point of view of being a self, it's projecting what it thinks it's perceiving. Really. It's giving meaning to things, and it believes those things have that meaning, inherently by themselves. Yeah? What do you, what do you think about Well, the way I see it is all that's going on, but th what it implies to the mind in selfing is there's a you that's doing it. If, you can, if, you're, if there's a sense I'm not the you that's doing it, then everything's just going on anyway. Yeah? See, we believe things are happening because of us. Even when you were younger, maybe you thought you had a reason why you were doing something, and then that reason was completed and you were still doing that thing. Yeah? So the mind would claim, oh, I'm doing this, because of that, but then that was done, and you were still doing this. So it's all made up, like it's a, like an overlay or a narration based on, like Buddha said, events are happening. And obviously, I don't know what Buddha said, nor does anyone, because like 300 years later, he, it was written about. But there's a statement pointing to him, which is, events happen, deeds are done, but there's no individual do, doer thereof. So there's an event called a city, and there's act actions in that city, but there's no one who's inhabitant of the city. Yes? There's no citizen of the city. It doesn't mean there's no city, so it's not about, I'm going to stop doing something. It's realizing there was never anyone who was doing it. It's much quicker. Yeah? Because if you think, all right, I'm going to stop doing something, or let's say seeking, and now seeking's got a bad name in certain circles. Yeah? So there's seeking. And there's a sense of being the seeker, so now the mind, in the sense of being the seeker, says, I've got to stop seeking, which is another form of seeking, yeah? Right, the, the city is the mind, or the city in this metaphor of, you know, the land, and the cities that are built on it. And I was in a group for about four years, just up in uh, the foothills of the Sierras, and there are people that are paying tons of money, and they've lived there for years and years and years, and they're building, you know, well that is, if that's what's going on that doesn't I don't believe that's not of service really except when the city collapses 
Yeah. When the cities collapse, there can be a, a startling of the selfing, and it can be a pretty good moment or a pause. Yeah. So when all your efforting seems to have come to naught, that can be a very good moment because then there's a pause occurs, and the selfing gets to see its uh, inevitable pointlessness. Yes. Yeah? And that can be a very good collapsing of the cities, and then. Then the land is seen, so you're really living on sacred ground already. There's no need to build a temple, in a sense. You are on sacred ground. Like ordinary mind and enlightened mind, and like in Zen they would say, ordinary mind and enlightened mind are the same mind. Yeah? So the ordinary mind takes it to be very important to build a, build a city, a spiritual city, a light on the hill to illuminate everyone else. But enlightened mind sees wherever it is as that spiritual non-city on the hill. Yeah? What's rubbing you? Get to that. What is it rubbing you? Do you feel like there is value in, in having cities and everything? Then there, are, then there is for you. Yeah? Until the day there won't be. And then hopefully you'll quote-unquote move out of those cities. Yeah, but you and I are given everything the meaning it has. So let's say you can give a city a really good meaning. You can give a spiritual life a really good meaning. Your mind. Yeah? And then... You could also, and it's not there's a you, the Lord could also give a city a meaning of being a prison, even though it's shiny and gold. Yeah? That's the important thing, is to realize that mind's giving everything the meaning it has. And one of the biggest meanings it's given everything is that I'm somehow the doer or a haver of it. Yeah? I would rather go to that one before all the other meanings are discussed. You know, well, should the city be high or low? Should it have nice parks? Should there be every building pointed to Mecca or the north. Yeah, all well, those things can be have some meaning. But the real meaning that occurs is when there's doing going on, the mind and selfing, it, whatever doing is being noted implies a doer. That's, the, that's its mechanism. Yeah? And it's, it's really quite unconscious. So when there's doing going on, it can't see it as just doing. It sees it as there must be a doer thereof. So when we don't notice or we can't believe What's happening, maybe we'll say God's the doer of that, yeah? But somehow the mind has to find, uh, it has to give a meaning to it as there must be someone or something that's doing this place, yes? That's self-centeredness. That's the, that's the mental system that most of us have been living from, yeah, in the mind. And it, so doing can't be recognized as just doing. There always has to be a doer thereof, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It does. And that's the beauty of it, because in a sense it has nothing to do with the self. And you'll see that the city will keep getting built when there's no feeling of being the builder of it. Yeah? And there'll still be inhabitation of a citizen when there's a real strong sense that you're, I mean, an inhabitation of the city, but there'll be a real strong sense you're not the citizen. Yeah? But there'll still be a city that seems to be inhabited. Now, in one view, from self-centeredness, that gets to be sort of paradoxical, but it's actually quite easy to travel as that, yeah? It's like in Zen, they say, first there is the mountain, or let's say with this thing, first there is the city, and then there's something occurs, a pause, and then there isn't a city, and then what happens? Then there's a city again, yeah? What happened is, the shift of the city being real has been dismissed. So, in a sense, instead of pointing at things of doing in cities and non-cities, the sense of being the dweller of the city is seen not to be real. 
and yet then there's city dwelling going on. Yes? But now as a city dweller, you're traveling a lot later than when you thought you were the city dweller. Because then when you think you're the city dweller, you can think, I hate this city. I've got to get out of this city. My, I, my, I'll be incredibly happy when this city is done or whatever. Yeah, that's all selfing. It all gets, st- it all out. The selfing is claiming. That's its first movement, yeah? It, the mind and selfing claims. That's what it does. So a body is seen as my body. Time is seen as my time. Actions are seen as my actions. Thoughts are seen as my thoughts or they're about me. The sense of claiming occurs. Yeah? So anytime there's any doing or seeing, it claims it as being the doer or saying she's the doer. So when something irritates me, yeah, there won't be a real acknowledgement of that. It will be a pointing. Who brought this irritation on me? She did. Yes. So there will be the emphasis of the doing will be muted and then the amplification of who did it is emphasized. Yes. Because it's self-centered. So doing and having really don't mean much. It's who's doing and who's having that mean a lot. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But see, if someone's perhaps sitting here and they're in that dynamic, it's good to point it out. That's what I believe the whole message is, is to speak about what we're not, because you can describe that. Now, if you're sitting in what you are, then just enjoy the space of sitting here speaking about what we're not. Don't, you don't need to sort of go over it, because you already have it. Yeah? You're clear that, hey, the city and the land are the same. But in a lot of times, people don't see it that way. They don't see doing and doer the same. They think the doer did it. Yes? Yeah. So that's the whole point. And if that sameness or that sense of all there is is that, that doesn't need to be described. Because you can't. It's just... Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. And then it seems like a dichotomy between the city and the land. Right. Yeah, and that the land's better than the city. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't think I've described the land as great today. I'm just saying. I'm. Just, but I see that thing. That's what occurs. Is when you talk about the indescribable. Yes. If someone hears it. Let's say the lion hears about the indescribable with sheep ears, then it says, "Oh, I can be, I can get that. I can become a lion that that lives in the indescribable. But now I'm a humble sheep living in sheep city. I can move to lion land, yes, but I only as a sheep. You know what I mean? And of course, that creates a dichotomy once again. So now you hear about the indescribable as somebody." Some person shares about the event that supposedly happened when they woke up, and you sit there and go, well, that hasn't happened to me, and now you're back in the city, and they're walking the land free and happy, yes? That's what happened. Yes, yes, you know, or worse, they're taking your money and your time and your energy. Yes, that will happen too. Well, once that situation is set up where they have something you want and you don't have, then you pay. <laughs> Some form. Literally, don't you? In some cases, you're in a position of pain. Yeah, because they have something you want that you don't believe you have. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's what mind does. It sets that dynamic up. And then for you to be special, you have to sort of pay who's special. Hopefully it'll be like a trickle-down spiritual economy. (laughs) The specialness of them will trickle down on you if you provide them with a really good lifestyle. Yeah, it sort of sounds like what's happened in this country in my way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the whole point with this message. Is like when I first started, when I entertained this, one of the first things I found was the dilemma. It wasn't the message about you're a lion? It's how it was heard. Yeah, which is you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you're hearing that message, you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. It may hit cheap ears. And as soon as it hits sheep ears, I can become like a lion. That's not the message. As soon as you 
as soon as there's a sense of I can become like a lion, there'll be a lot of people that will help you become like a lion here. That's a business, yes? They're in the business of helping you as a sheep and staying as a sheep to become like a lion. Yeah. But this message is you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the question is not, don't worry about the message, just see what's hearing it. Yeah? You may not be what's hearing it. That's the real message. Yes? So you're a lion, you're a lion, you're a lion. I can become like a lion. Who's telling you that? The sheep mind. Selfing is telling you, you are already something, this, and the best you can do is become sort of like a lion, but you're never going to transform into a lion, are you? Because you're already something, a sheep. Now, I'm just saying, let's go back to the sheep point and see if you're that. If you're not that, that's being a lion. Yeah? Because if you do have, if your mind does have, and an, an, let's say... Uh, a basic or primordial whatever nature which is empty of being a lion or a sheep, yeah, but is empty and its ability here is to reflect, yes? If right now you're identified as a sheep, the mind's reflecting life as a sheep. So immediately it sees life as a sheep and pastures where sheep live and other sheep and a better pasture there and da 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 and that's how it views life, yes? And then the mind, which can reflect or entertain, is entertaining life as a sheep. And it's producing some effects on you because you're not that. Yeah. So let's say here, mind has entertained the idea of being separate, obviously. When you're looking perceptually at things, it feels like you're here, and that's there, and then there's all this space, and there's tons of things around, yes? And so it's like giving John Coltrane, a great jazz player, an idea. All right, riff on separation, John. And he can just go off. Well, that's what mind is doing. Mind is believing it's a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, which throws you as a long-lasting, separate entity, which creates a sense of separation, you and other and all this baloney. And then, it's mind's just riffing on that. So the mind's ability to entertain could sit here and entertain that I just bought these pants yesterday, and maybe they're too short. Yeah, maybe they don't, don't touch the back of my running shoe. And I could be sitting here entertaining this for hours. Jesus Christ, why did I buy these pants? They're too short. Why didn't anyone tell me they were short? Like, fuck, I can't. how can I get away from here? <laughs> Isn't that... It, that ability to entertain is what's driving, quote-unquote, you crazy, really. Because it can entertain the insane... What does your head do every day? Something happens and doesn't it represent it to you? Yeah? We're living on an interpretation level. And then what it does is it interprets life. It, first of all, conscious contact is what brings us life, yes? Consciousness, contacting, seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, yes? And then it does that, but then the mental process, because it's in selfing, claims it. It claims being what's conscious. So I'm the one who's seeing, I'm the one who's hearing, I'm the one who's feeling, I'm the one who's tasting, I'm the one who's touching. And then it riffs on... Well, I didn't like what I saw. Oh, I shouldn't be feeling this. Or whatever. And it just rips on separation. Because it's claimed the conscious contact. All we're attempting to say is, if you're not that, everything gets aligned in a more, let's say, uh, benign fashion for you. You'll travel lighter here. When you see it as life is happening, it's not happening to me. Yeah? Self, a position of self-centeredness is sees life as it's happening to me. It doesn't try to do it. That's how it sees it. It looks every day at how the day happens to me. Yeah? It looks at Debbie and how Debbie's happening to me. How Heather's happening to me. It's always self-centeredness. So life is happening, but the interpretation is life is happening to me. That's where the obsession with this idea arises, and that's where it produces exquisite suffering, as you know. Yeah, does it? And look at how many things you want. Hello? Look at how many things you want that you don't seem to have right now. And they could be the same things you used to have that you didn't really care about when you had them, but now that they're missing, you really want them. Yeah. And it points out to you that they would really be great if you had them when you don't have them. And it doesn't point out to you when they're, that this is really great when you actually have it. It points out that it's really great when you don't have it. <laughs> and what does that produce in this little apparatus? Suffering. Yeah. 
because it, it, it doesn't respond to what's happening, because that's life. Yeah? Conscious contact is happening. It reacts to what's happening from this view of being a self. It claims what's happening as being the one who's doing it. So consciousness, which is, let's say, spirit, gets claimed by your mind and becomes a verb you're doing. So instead of recognizing all there is is spirit, all there is is consciousness, consciousness is, sound, is now seen as a verb that you do. Well, I'm, I really practiced in the city this weekend, and I'm feeling super conscious. And then when you leave the city and stop paying the guy the money, you feel really unconscious. Yeah? But all there is is consciousness. It's not an experience that you and me have. That's an interpretation. Consciousness is a state that's noted or not. Yeah? If it's claimed, you won't note it. It will be seen as something you do or something you get by what you do. It really will. Yeah? When you feel conscious, don't you go over your day and look at what you must have done to feel really conscious today? and then try to maybe do it again. And if you think it's really worked, you probably write a book and try to lay it on other people. This is what made me conscious. I'm going to tell you what to do that make you conscious. But all there is is consciousness. Yeah? It's not something that I produced or achieved. It's something that was entertained, yes, by being, as being so, in my view, by entertaining what I'm not as what I'm not. When I entertain what I thought I was as what I'm not, that's entertaining what I am. There's nothing more to do. I don't have to turn from there and then find my authentic self. There's a realization there is no authentic self. All there is is seeing. Yeah? So now I'm seeing what? What I'm not. Yeah. When I'm seeing, when I'm seeing from what I'm not, that's blindness in a way. Yeah? That's unconsciousness. Not unconscious conscious like we talk about it that's being unconscious to our nature which is consciousness yeah so there's seeing and seeing doesn't mean visual obviously seeing and then there's seeing from what we're not seeing from what we're not is a form of looking called self centered obviously yeah seeing gets claimed by the mental process yeah and a template's put over seeing that hides its nature and is called looking so now you're looking, but you're looking in a contrived manner, self-centeredly, yes? So when you're looking, you're assuming that you're not what you're looking for, obviously, because you would think that if I was, I'd stop looking. But what you're looking for, yeah? Let's say you're looking for what you think you are, but you're looking for it outside, maybe in that savior or that teacher or in that philosophy. But you're hoping to get it, to have it as a, an advantage for you as this. Instead of just recognizing I'm not this, which throws this whole ball game out of the window, and then what's obvious dawns on you as obvious. Instead of knowing something, you find out. Yeah? You find out. It gets downloaded, not in your thinking process, but it gets downloaded, regurgitated, and you get it more, let's say, through your balls or through your gut. And it rises up, and that's the unspoken yes. Yeah? I'm not that. As soon as that, I'm not that, isn't a statement you're making. It's, I'm just using it as a way of attempting to frame seeing. Because seeing's ability is to see. And most of us, that ability has been co-opted by the mental process claiming the seeing as being the seer of it, yes? So it's blinded to seeing because the seeing can see the mental construction of a you. It can see selfing. It's seeing selfing like that. But when the process that's being seen claims to be the seer, yes, it turns the seeing into a form of looking called self-centeredness. So St. Francis says, what's looking is what you're looking for. Yeah? So what's looking, seemingly as James or as Paul, is in fact seeing. Yeah? The consciousness that I think is Paul is consciousness. Yeah? So... He says, what, what's looking is what you're looking for. In other words, every moment there's looking, that's what you're looking for. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm already Paul, and I'm looking for what's looking. That's why you can't see it. Yeah? What's looking, when it becomes a you, it immediately looks for. Because what's lost now is what's looking. Yeah? Yes? 
That's right. Definitely. Which it's happening now. Yes, yes. Well, the emotions are like the language of the body, yeah? Maybe it would be nice to look at what's seeing. Instead of saying, what is this? Why not? What's that? That's seeing. Yeah? Because the seeing is exactly the same. To me, emotions are like the language of the body. Yes? And because the mind is identified as the body, emotions have more, more oomph than thoughts do, to tell you the truth. Yes? When they combine, they really do a nice number on people, don't they? When you can usually see thoughts and sort of have some kind of sense of immunity to them, but when thoughts combine with a feeling, they make up a really juicy story, yes? Yes, because you have a choir now. It's not just the mental mental voice singing, it's the body going along with it. It's not really going along with it, but the, it's being downloaded, these feelings, and then it's doing what it does, which is to, re, you know, respond, it's reacting to it, and that's the language of the body, yeah? And it's, a, it's, a very, it's sort of like the sirens of Ulysses, in a way. For most people, yes. When they hear the body and the and the and the thoughts combine, they're usually taking it to be real. That's when they really need quote unquote help. That's what I've noticed. I can see people can sort of travel somewhat okay with their thoughts, but when thoughts combine with feelings, it's usually like their boat starts sinking. <laughs> yeah. But as you just said, instead of asking what is that, why not just sense what's seeing it? Yeah. There's no immunity in knowing what that is, except that it's going to distill into I'm not that. That's the only way it works for me. Yeah, that's that's still a sense of selfing, though, because it still has a sense of uh, being the doer of it, yes? Oh, I think so. Cathartic events, again, are, they can usually be, in time, be followed by a, a pause. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, but there's no, there's no sense of doer of it. The feelings are already there. You just, yeah, let them do. It's like a not trying to unknot itself. Yeah? Yeah? In other words, as a body, we're an example of, of mind contracting. Yes? The body is a symbol of that. So most people have like an iron ball in their physicality. Yes? Some hole or an iron ball. It's like the contraction of selfing. Yes? Selfing contracts. Some, some, some opportunities, the for me, when I find I meet people who seem to be screwed, let's say, I'd much rather go through the body than do any mental work. Yes? Just get some kind of, do something with the body. Surf or do something or get some body work or whatever. Because the body will re re respond without the sense of being the doer. Yes? That's the mind's little addition. And I like going right through the body. Yes? Definitely. And a cathartic event can bring about a sense of pause where there's a dislo dislodging or an unloading of baggage, yes? So that you as this, as what you're not, can travel lighter, which allows it to be easily entertained when I'm not. When you're really screwed here, it tends to suck your attention into the condition. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, mine is just going to self. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things you can do nowadays that, that bypass the mind as the doer that just affect the body condition. Yeah, if you want to talk, I'll talk to you afterwards.
What happened to the talk? We just got questions. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Right. Right. Forget about it. We're having a new time today. Well, I guess it may help you with what you were saying earlier. You know, you feel like you're doing always the same thing. So if you throw in a stuff at you, it's sort of a, I don't know, it can be you. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice rationalization. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, uh, I'll buy it for a second. Yeah. Uh, seeing, speaking of seeing, uh, it has occurred to me when I... It seems to me that uh, where I go wrong is the um, separation into. Uh, Who goes wrong, though? This is the old thing. Who the hell is doing this? What are we talking about here? You know, what, what happens uh, mechanically is that there is a separation of seer and seeing, as opposed to just. Well, you know what you need? You don't have to go down the road, go back. It was just the seeing, and now there's the seeing has been interpreted as a right. seer and seen, but right. all there is going on is seeing. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. A lot of times people think they got to go down the road to get their answer. Go back. Mm -hmm. Fucking retrace your steps. Yeah. Because all the while, you're presenting this convoluted, maze-like little thing that was seeing every moment of that. Yeah. Why isn't that being noticed? Because it's too obvious to us, and the mind's truly not interested in it, because there's no specialist, specialty it can, or specialness it can mine out of that. It's totally, totally uninterested in seeing. It wants to, be, it wants to a, adapt a form of looking to seeing, and that's, it's interested in that because then it can be the star of that. Yeah? So just like that question, you... You became the star of it in like, in like one-third of the way, and then you became the star waiting for the answer. And your, the starhood kept building as the question kept evolving. That's the whole fucking point. You see that? Uh, well, actually, I did see that. I'm just saying that is that the valid way of... I'm going to slap you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just want to clarify. Is that the valid way of looking at it? As you don't need my... You have your own authority. Find out. Find out. It's not going to be good for me to tell you anything. If you hang a hat on what I say, you're going to hate me down the road. You have to. I'm no fucking... No. You're your own authority. It's not knowing. It's finding out. This is an invitation. You entertain it, and then as you're traveling, it, you will find out. You're that mind. You're that mind. Yeah? I have total faith in what you are. All you need is an invitation because your ability to entertain is there. It's just in self-centeredness, we've been force-fed of a limited love spectrum of possibilities called anything that can possibly happen in self-centeredness, which always means it has to be happening to you. Yes? That limits your ability, or your possibilities. This is seeing I'm not that, and then the mind opens up. Have you seen what happens when here you are, the best you can do is, all right, I'm entering the next phase of my lifelong therapy, I'm on my 50th eighth body worker, this and that, on and on and on and on. When the mind entertains I'm not that, the first thing it entertains is I can be free of it. And then what you find out about is how much that selfing is going on. Yeah? Because there's still a belief that somewhere there's an end of the selfing and then you appear as an authentic self. That selfing. It's selfing, 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 and then you see it's, it's like entrails and entanglement because you're not seeing from it. While you're seeing from it, what you truly would be clear to, great to see is the immensity in, it, in the mental realm of selfing. It has no existence, but the immensity of it in the mental realm. But you find out knowing is a booby prize. People want to know because it sort of soothes the wild beast. But knowing blows off. It's like putting a paint on a, a, a moist surface. It's just going to bubble and pop. It's not going to last. It's just all you're going to be doing is painting and repainting, scraping. I've got to get rid of these old ideas. I've got to leave that whatever cult. I'll move to a new cult. And then sanding, oh yes, purification. And then putting a new paint. But there's a moisture seeping in from the cell thing. It just arose. And then you're busy in this giant urban renewal project about you. That's not it. This is about enjoying today when you leave here because you're lighter. Fuck. It's not like jumping from here. I gotta go to someone else is talking at five. 
time. Uh, you, uh, oh, but I'll be peaceful when I hear them. It's insanity. This is about, oh, fuck it, man. Yeah, hang out. You know, shit. I got terrible news. I don't, what do I need to do? I show up and do it, or I don't. And I'm accountable for either way because I'm not accountable. Yeah, this is about traveling later now. It's not about, it's, what happens is the need to be liberated is dismissed. You don't need to be liberated. It's all pointless. Once you, I know people have been met enlightened three times this life. Three times. How many does this it take? Like, is the sixth one going to be the charm? Give me a fucking break. It's not about that. You ever see people that are really spiritually advanced? They've got, even though they may be dancing and this, that, this, their spiritual sphincter muscle is so tight. It's like fucking constipated. Giant game? I can't watch Giant game. Gotta be, give me a break. If you like the Giants, there's no you liking the Giants. Just like it. <laughs> Can't you give yourself that little piece of meat? Is it, you have to be on a mental diet. Things like a giant big mother mental hen sitting on you. Like an egg that never, that never hatches. Going over you all day with its little tentacles. You're like an urban renewal project which will never end. No matter how many hoops you jump through, you're never going to arrive at happiness, joy, and of freedom as a self. Never. It's, in a, it's, in, it's on a continual moving sidewalk. When it thinks it's still, everything else is still moving. It's all baloney. You just see it. You know, there's a freedom from it. You know, the freedom from it doesn't become a thing now that you're free from that. There's just the act of freedom from it. Yeah? It's not like you get a freedom. There's no acquiring. You don't get anything. It's not like you get a freedom after you stop this. There's just a freedom from that's activated. You're walking around, and it's a verb. Yeah? There's freeing, let's say. There's no freedom. There's freeing. Or realization. There's no realization. There's real realizing. It's a finding out, not a knowing. That's all it is. When you find out, when you don't know then there's an alertness, there's an awakeness to it. And then in that don't know is how is opens you up to finding out. If you know, the first thing you have to do is find out that you don't know. And that may take years of fucking knowing. Yeah? <laughs> if you think you know, or that's what you want, it may take years to realize I don't know. But as soon as the I don't know has been entertained, now it's all about finding out. Yeah? And you're your own authority. Yeah, you know it. It's an unspoken yes. When are you going to finally... If not, you'll always be putting your savior on someone else or your blame on someone else. Yeah. And then what happens if you get in a pickle is this. There'll be a, a, there'll be a sense of a you having to blame others to get some fucking mental relief from the unbearability of why they think it's, think it's done. All that's dismissed, you know. Something shit hits happens, hey, shit happens. I like the idea of seeing what you're not because that's the act of seeing. Yeah? And if you can't, and we all have fulfilled that requirement, but we're calling it I'm looking. So I'm just saying, well, let's check that out. The St. Francis statement, pretty good, eh? What's looking, which is you looking, yeah? All right, let's do it this way. Here I am. I'm seeing depth, yes? We've gone over this before. Maybe I hope. Tell me if this works or not for you, because it seems to work for me. I'm trying it. So I'm seeing death. Yes, I'm seeing all of you. There's 12 views here. Yes, and of course when I see you, like a little a, a memory holographic meaning display arises. Yes, and Greg. Yes, Greg. 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 No, too many Gregs. Greg. 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 Greg yes, yeah? and there's a seeing though. See, and I, and what I'm seeing, I'm calling you. Yes. Now you're seeing, same time, non, I'm just not talking visually, but we use it as an example, seeing, and you're seeing me, what I call me, but it's a you. In, in your sense of seeing, I'm a you. Yes, Tommy? Yeah? In your sense of seeing, I'm a you. In my sense of seeing, you're a you. Now, so here I am, I'm seeing. Everyone has that feeling. I'm seeing, don't they? Let's say that, you know that who am I thing they do? Let's say the mental process jumped on that a long time ago when you were very, very young. 
And it asked, who am I, when it noted the seeing, yeah? It, who am I? And what it did is it, it gave itself its own meaning. I'm me, yeah? Have you ever done this, who am I? I bet you one of the first times you did it, you went, who am I? And then the mind went, me. And then you go, oh, who is this me? And then you try to explore. But you just got the whole message of the mental process. It takes the I that's seeing to be a you, yeah? An object that's seeing. And this is just a you identified as me. That's all it is. Yeah? As I see you, I'm taking what I'm seeing as you, as me, and believing this is what's seeing. Yeah? This is the mental process claiming the act of seeing. It's on the money. Its first reaction to seeing is, yeah, I, but that I, let's say, is consciousness, it claims that I to be me, which is a body. Yeah? And when, from then on, when you think of you, or I, you think of it as a body, don't you? When you go back, let's say today we thought of three years ago, how would you picture yourself three years ago? As a body, yeah? And if you're thinking about, oh, geez, I'm really worried what's going to happen to me next week, you're actually worrying about you as, in next week as a body, yes? That's the object of the mind. The mental process, taking yourself to be subjectively obsessed with an object called itself. <laughs> Yeah, you have to see it. It's super clear. I, I, I. One eye seeing. One eye hearing. One eye feeling. One eye tasting. One eye touching. Mental reaction, mental process, recognizes that, says, that eye's me, and there's the story of self. Yeah? You as a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, fueled everywhere you're looking. Every, if you're looking at porno or you're looking at the temple, every time you're looking is what's seeing. Literally. That's why it's so obvious. But the mind's reaction to that seeing, it neutered it, and it's been neutering it for so long, it's become a habit. So every time seeing is, is being displayed, you just feel like it's me looking. Yeah, that's it. That little, quote-unquote, lazy habit is what causes this whole place to appear freaking real to us. So here, in this appearance, if I hit it with this appearance, it hurts. What? This appearance, yeah? Yes? If I hit this chair with this arm, what would it hurt? Probably the arm more than the chair. We do this again, but this one is important. Okay, here we are in this space. And here's this chair. And actually, I should use this chair because a very important ass has been sitting on this chair for a while. Me. Right? So here's the chair. Everyone sees it, yes? Everyone sees the chair? I'm going to move the chair. Out of sight, let's say. Now, the only way you knew the chair's there now is by memory, yes? You're not seeing it, are you? You're not hearing it, feeling it, tasting it, touching it. And did I have to move any space that we believed the chair was taking up back when I moved it out? Did you see that? It's like a magician. I just moved the chair through the space and you didn't even notice it, did you? You didn't see that hole in the space, did you? The hell the chair was in. So in a sense, did the chair take up any space? Did it? And where would I see the chair's appearance? Would I see it in the floor? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it rubbed a little movement in the floor. Maybe it rubbed against a sumo baby. Maybe it rubbed against a, um, a wall. Then you would see the, the appearance of the chair would have affected the appearance of the wall, yes? But in the space, did the chair leave any mark on the space? None, yes? Sky. In, in Tibetan Buddhism, they always use the sky like nature. Yeah. The mind has a sky like nature. So you look at the sky right now, what we call sky. Flames are going through the sky, yes? Yeah? Do they ever run into sky? Okay. Have you ever heard a plane pull up? Terminal, I've run into a big chunk of sky. What should I do? I'm surrounded by all sky. Explosions, do they rip the sky open to this? When it rains, does the sky get wet or just the appearance of the earth? So in effect, whatever happens, this is an appearance, yes? The appearance has effect on what? Other appearances, yes? Yeah? If I, I hit my knee on this, it would hurt. But in space, it has no effect, does it? The chair doesn't have any effect on the space that it's in, does it? Can you hit the space and affect the ground? Where would I strangle it? I would strangle the space. Which, where, what would be this neck of this space? 
So in a sense, we have no, we have no, in a sense, as an appearance, we have no effect on the space, do we? Do you have any effect on the space that you're appearing in? What's the difference between me and a chair? As this. If you're taking yourself to be the me, which is the you, the you is like a chair, an object, yes? What's the difference between this chair and this? I can affect other appearances, but I can't affect space. So, maybe, just maybe, you would like that space of consciousness, yes? That this chair or body is appearing in. Just maybe, yes? Yeah? Whatever you do or don't do has absolutely no effect on your nature of space whatsoever. You, as an appearance, have no effect on space whatsoever. Yes? Yet, entertaining space can have a huge effect on you. As this. Yes? It allows you, the you as this, to travel lighter here. By just entertaining a little bit of its actual spacious-like nature, it allows it to travel lighter here in the world of things and appearances. Yes? You are that. Space takes itself to be a thing. Yeah? And the only solution isn't to get the best thing like therapist. That will, you know, that's like having pails of water when your house is on fire. It's important, maybe. But the best solution is the space like nature. Yes? Because all the seeming quote unquote problems inherently root back to that one mental frame called self centeredness. All the mental states you're taking to be your experience here are appearing in and defined by that frame of self-centeredness. We're questioning that frame. Then see what kind of meaning your mind will give to what's appearing in it. You may be able to travel lighter while you're here. Now, yeah? instead of hoping like a chair, oh, I'll be great when I'm brought into the throne room, when they add some things up and now I'm a throne and the king, you know, Oh, I'm just a humble chair, but I'm going to arrive one day after I go to chair university, and I'll go to the, I'll be moved to the throne room, and the king will sit on me, and through the feeling of the king's ass on me, I will be arrived. I will be a chair of all chairs. This is what we're doing all freaking day. You're thinking the Agendas is going to save you maybe later on. Maybe you have some porno movies when you get home, or whatever. Who knows? But the mind is constantly putting it off, isn't it? It will be great when and where, and the when and where are never now and here, are they? It's very rarely now and here that it's going to be great. It's always where and when. Yes? <laughs> Jesus. How can you get weaned off of it? If you're, the, if you're of its first production, if you're identified with its first production, how can you get weaned off of all the rest? False evidence will appear real to what? False evidence. How could it not? If this, is, if this is taken to be what you are, then whatever the mind presents of... Where does anxiety come from? From what's not happening, doesn't it? The male mind dwelling on what's not happening produces mental anxiety. Check it out. Yeah? So you go, the mind goes into this realm of what's not happening, and then it thinks about something, which is its way of cultivating a mental crop, yes? It gets in and then does, goes over it, over it, over it again, looks at it from every position, but only defined by self-centered, and walk around it. And then a big bud grows, and then it brings it back to now, smokes it, and you're like, oh, Jesus, I'm going to have, I'll be destitute next week. Even if you are destitute next week, the meaning your mind's giving to it will not be what happens when it occurs. You find out what things are like. You don't know what they're like. 
If you think you know what they like, that's all mental. Yeah? Finding out is a different way of traveling. That's what it gives you the way and the w- with all to deal with what you think is undealable, unmanageable. Because in your knowing, it's unmanageable, isn't it? I can't fucking, how am I going to survive this? Well, guess what? Find out. <laughs> That's right. No, that we're outside. <laughs> exactly. That's the beauty of it. I hope it's not too hot. Yeah? It's hot here. I'm getting fried. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just a simple, it's a simple invitation. I have total confidence in mind, not the conditional mind. In mind. And you are that. Yeah? You've just been entertaining yourself to be something else. Yeah? And know why it's hard to break, because your interest and and attention is wedded to that, because the mind believes it's you. So, I'll tell you, one of the first major reliefs I got was when I recognized the thoughts weren't mine. And so I started having immunity to thoughts when they weren't held as my thoughts. And then after a while, I saw constant examples of my, yes, my, 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 as being the bridge for all that meaning to be injected into things, yes? The act of being identified was what was giving everything the meaning it had. The thing has no real meaning in and of itself. It's an appearance. It's meaningless in a way, yes? But my mind was giving everything the meaning it had in self-centeredness through the act of being identified. My body, my thoughts, my job, my relationship, yes? Instead of finding out about the relationship, I already knew about the relationship. It's my relationship. So let me tell you what's going to happen in our relationship. Because this is what's happened in all my relationships. I'm going to flip out. I'm not going to be committed. And you might as well just get out of here now. Well, how about finding out? No, I'm telling you. I know what it's going to be like. This is how it's going to go. Why would you want to get up every day if that was the case? Yeah? <laughs> But this is about finding out what frees you from that. It's giving up the identification which has to know, because it doesn't have any existence, yes? It has to know, and then finding out. And your idea of what life is, and what it's going to be, and what it was, will be totally different than how, what you find out about it. Yeah? Totally different. And hopefully, after a while, you'll humbly submit and surrender the idea of being a self over to the care of this greater power that's demonstrated itself over and over and over. Yes? Here. But I still want to be special. Well, hold on then. I still want to be right. Well, hold on. Stay in the self thing. That's what you'll get. And alone. You'll have that too. You'll be special, right, and alone. Feisty today. I want to kick some spiritual ass. Give me the sword, I'll chop some heads off. That's what we need. You ever see that thing? What was that thing of Sleepy Hollow, the headless horseman? There we go. On living without a head or something. That's a website or something. On living without a head. What? Hmm? Douglas Harding stuff. Douglas Harding. I always like Douglas Harding. So hey, any other questions?